Providing Choice, a Florida Charter School Alliance podcast and speaker series. I'm Lynn Norman Tech, Executive Director of the Alliance, and your host for this podcast. On this episode, we speak with Carla Rodriguez, the principal of the Padamir Charter School Middle, and her assistant principal, Paola Espinosa. These two school leaders talk about the National Blue Ribbon Award their school just received, closing the achievement gap between minority and non-minority students, and how their teachers and staff have formed a great relationship with parents and the community they serve. I hope you enjoy this episode. Um, well, thank you for being with me today. I know, I know you're really busy, and the Friday right before Thanksgiving is probably quite chaotic. Um, so I appreciate uh, this chat. Will you introduce yourselves, please? Um, Hi, Lena. My name is Carla Rodriguez, and I'm the principal of Academy or Charter School Middle. Mm -hmm. and this is my Good afternoon. Principal. I'm Paola Espinosa. I'm the assistant principal for Academy or Charter School Middle. Um, and in and in Miami Dade, for those who are watching across the state. Um, first, I wanted to say congratulations on your Blue Ribbon Award. Thank wow. you. Quite an accomplishment. Very exciting moment, I have to say. Very Ooh, exciting. Yes, very memorable moment. That's great. So talk about that. What got you all to, to this moment of earning a blue ribbon? Well, the school, I have to say, has been open for the past. We're, we're actually right now the 10th year of the school. Mm -hmm. So it, it has grown enormously. I mean, we're talking about a school that opened up um, back in 2012 with just only it was, I want to say, 80 students. It was under another administration. I've been with the school for the past seven years, and um, we've grown every year and growing academically, staff, students, and even, I mean, location and everything the past five years in our new location now. Um, we've gone from a, our always population has always been a Title I school. Mm -hmm. We have 75% of the free and reduced. 98% is Hispanic here. I mean, I know we're in Miami, so of course. Um, but we've grown in the sense of the opportunities for the students and in enrollment and um, in performance of the school as well. And we were in a school um, the past two years that we were considered high performing two years ago as well on that part. Um, and then we all know we had a COVID years. So we had the challenges of COVID and then we were given the opportunity, the award for uh, closing that gap uh, with the blue ribbon which was an award that was very great timing for us because especially for my staff with such a challenging year that they had, knowing that all their strength, their efforts and hard work and everything, it was still recognized through the Blue Ribbon because they still saw they were able to still close that gap as much as possible considering the times mm -hmm. um, with the students and, and the education and everything there. Right. And then, and then, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. So yeah, so piggy banking on the learning gaps, that's uh, like you said, it is something that it's taken the last few years. Uh, even with COVID, even with a global pandemic, we uh, saw gains in several of our core areas as per um, the state assessment data. So that was also something to celebrate despite the challenges. And we got through this. We have a wonderful staff. Our, our culture here at the school is very family oriented. Um, the students, although we are a small school, uh, not serving more than 360 students or student body, however, we do have a lot to offer for it being a small school, from culture to, um, you know, professional development for our staff, um, all the learning opportunities we offer our students after school tutoring, we also offer Saturday Academy every year. And yeah, the list goes on. So that's something that we're, we're very proud of. And I know that was one of the highlights for uh, it's being chosen as a blue ribbon school. Absolutely, because a blue ribbon, it's not enough to just do what's in the classroom. Correct. You, you mentioned it, it's that whole child um, and doing things after school and the extracurricular. And, and you probably have some great outreach to parents, correct? Being a title yes. school. Yeah, we do. We do have a lot of, we have our parent academies that we do offer to our parents. Um, last year, we, we got creative, as many schools and students say, that we all got familiar with Zoom and Google Meet and all these online platforms. So we were able to successfully still continue with our parent academies last year because it makes a difference. I mean, it's not just the teacher with the student. It's also the parents with the students. It's a community effort. It's like the same goal as it takes a village to raise a child. And that is one of the key things here is working with, along with our parents, along with the staff and everyone to contribute to that education. Absolutely. It has to be that perfect partnership. 
Exactly. Yeah. And although, yes, we did experience some challenges like every school did in the nation, but we took those challenges and transformed them into opportunities, especially with the technological components with our Google Classroom, our teachers, our students, our parents became so familiar with the platform, became so familiar with all the educational features of the platform and other digital uh, programs that we have, academic programs. So that's something that we're seeing it today from parents, to teachers, us, everyone here at the school site that is uh, utilizing it to its maximum. So that's all that's been. You want to talk, expand on that? Because I know everyone talked about technology and, you know, the live, live classroom. And what did you all do that was different that kind of resulted in the adoption by everyone? Um, I think uh, beginning with, we had a hybrid model uh, mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Obviously the numbers changed. We were always surveying our parents, uh, even surveying our faculty with things that we can change here and there. So always keeping everybody into account about changes that were to come. So it was a very smooth, gradual transition that uh, everyone was informed, trained on. And I think it made the transitions and all the changes uh, go more smoothly. Than, um, you know, than expected. So I think that was definitely a highlight. No, yeah. I agree. No, and the part where the Google Meet also, we were able to create videos in bilingual because we do have our parents that only okay. speak Spanish. So we created some tutorials on even the basics, how to go on there and check the work assignments for your child and how to how to turn in assignments and how to communicate with the parent, with the teachers. So we had even created little tutorials through Google uh, with Google Meet and Google Classroom and everything, showing them step-by-step -step on that for them and then sending it through email so they were able to see it and understand the because a lot of the parents were not familiar because remember we closed from one day to the next we found out on there so we were using the google classroom platform but it was a quick turnaround that we had to do the full effort into the google classroom there and, and that's brilliant the tutorial i need that because sometimes i do get those forms from school this log into this log into that and i'm like what um, yeah <laughs> Even the download, download yeah. Google into your phone, even to the basics on that part. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's so great. I love that. Um, so you talked about the, the achievement gap and that you've got the predominantly Hispanic population. And most people, because the, the area of Miami you're in, um, can you talk about that area? And how's that different from when people think just Miami, Miami? Because your population is a variety of Hispanics, correct? Yeah, we have many Hispanics. I mean, we have Venezuelans, we have Nicaraguans, Colombians, I mean, from all different parts of the country on there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is for them, and we even had some kids coming in, enrolling for the first time last year, and they were, had to get used to logging into a computer and creating account and understanding what they had to do on that part. So um, one thing that we did do with our, even our ESO program is I, we did have our ESO coordinator and a, our ESC coordinator as well. And they provided support to the students via Google Meet as well. So the kids had their regular schedule that they had to go into um, to go into their language arts, into their math or science, into their classes. But in addition, they had a session with an ESO teacher or an uh, ESC teacher for support. So it was an open session for them for 45 minutes to tell them, okay, where are you right now? What do you need help in? How can I assist you in their language? Let's help you out with uh, tutoring and everything. So that made a difference also for the, for the Hispanic students, the ESO students on that part, because they were able to have a session in Spanish with that teacher and then understand more and be able to ask someone, can you help me with this specifically? And there was other students in common with them. So it wasn't only, um, I'm the only ESO student and everyone else speaks English and uh, they already know how to do it, but I don't. So that extra 45 minute support that they had with the ESO and ESC coordinator made a big difference for them as well. Well, well clearly, cause you're closing that gap and you've got great scores. Um, yes. That is wonderful. Um, so talk to me more about the Blue Ribbon. Um, have you had a celebration on campus? You know in COVID times, but have you been able to celebrate <laughs> students? Yeah, no, we did. We actually just had a this ceremony. Week, not too long ago. Yeah, the other day. Um, it was a very nice, we had a, we invited all our students into the cafeteria um, and we had Mr. Hodge. He's actually the CEO from the Children's Trust. Mm -hmm. He came out and recognized the award with us and spoke to the students and everything, um, congratulated them. Um, in addition, we also had a, some other guest speakers and we had Blue Bell come as well. And who donated the ice cream to the students. So they're very excited about that part. They love that. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and, and it's harder now for you all because once you get the A, once you get those accolades, it's actually harder to maintain yes. that, that standard. So without giving away any secrets, what are your plans moving forward? Well, we'll continue uh, when it comes to the data, academic data, we'll continue to closely monitor it. We work closely here, very collaboratively with our support staff, our instructional coaches, our teachers, ourselves, obviously, continuous uh, meetings and collaboration really from every end to make sure that we're targeting those areas of needs, uh, whether it's the uh, ELA, math, science, whatever academic area it is, our English language learners, and that we all work together as a team and that we mainstream all that, all the learning opportunities from bell to bell schedule to after school tutoring and all the other the, our interventions that occur throughout the day, just making sure that we're continuing with that collaborative effort. Yeah. And you know, the other and part that we do this year as well, and a little bit more, we have more is, which we always had is a wonderful student services. I have a wonderful counselor that I speak very highly of that she does a wonderful job. And she's had a lot of, uh, I don't wanna say challenges, but a lot of work that she's been doing with the students as well. So uh, working with them and still reminding them the values of the month. And then because for a lot of these students it's that transition coming back from the remote world and coming back in person and having that routine and that schedule, even for the things that we take for granted, having that breakfast in the morning, getting dressed, getting in the car and coming to school back again. It's not just going to the, t the computer and turning on a camera and that's it. So it's been a the transition for them. So having the mental health support, having the counselor support, and then so it's the child getting the support emotionally and academically at the same time. Mm -hmm. So because those are two, two things, key things that work together for them. So those and are the things that yeah, we're and that's an area them. that we also highlighted in our blue ribbon, uh, our, our application, our summaries. Yeah. You know, we focus on the well-rounded student. Of course, academics is important, but uh, social, emotional, all those different aspects of a child, of, of their learning experience it definitely needs to be taken into account. Yeah. So we work closely with our support um, services, our student services department. And we aspect. also have is the extracurricular activities that we do have. We, did, we brought them back this year. So uh, we had volleyball right now, which actually we were very proud of yesterday. We won our championship yesterday. Our yes. JV and varsity. <laughs> yes, got two nice trophies here to show off in our front office. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. so those type of things. So it builds up the, the morale for the students and the confidence and the want to continue doing well in all aspects, academically, mm -hmm. in school and outside. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because absolutely that's a, that's a wonderful model. And you know, we all talk about it in theory, but it's wonderful to hear you all that it's in practice and, and successful. And it's not just um, the blue ribbon that you got recently, but I was looking at some Florida scores from even 2018 and how, how high your school ranked, this tiny school in the top 30 percentile in overall um, scores, um, beating out the state in math and in reading. Um, so I, I can tell, I mean, you're being very humble about it, but I can tell that you <laughs> have been building up to this moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, have, I have to say, I'm behind a team that is it's a wonderful team. My staff, I speak very highly of them, but every single one of my teachers, um, they all, you could, the work ethics, the dedication, um, the teamwork, the family that they build, because we mm -hmm. are a small school, but at the end of the day, it's great to see how they all work together. It's not to say the ELA department is separate from the math. No, there is collaboration 100% across the board from all the subjects and even the electives as well. They all work together. Um, and same as with the extracurriculars activities, the sports and everything, um, they all intertwine together, which makes a difference for the students on that part. And as we were growing through the years and when I started with Academia, we're able to bring also the other electives into classes. And that made a difference too, because I know middle school is the year that the students are exploring. They, they, mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out who they are, what they want, what they like, they don't like. So bringing all these different electives and on board into our campus made a difference too, because it wasn't just seeing the traditional science class. We were able to bring forensics into the school. Um, we brought also our ecology. So we work with the Everglades as well. So uh, they were able to go to a field trip a few weeks ago. So that hands-on learning experience also makes a difference for them. So that's what makes the difference with the teachers um, and the, what they're bringing into the classroom for the students. So I should have asked you first, your background. It's like, how long, we'll talk with you, Ms. Rodriguez, you go first. How long have you been in education and where did you get your start? <laughs> well, I've been in education for many years. Um, I graduated from FIU. I worked at John A. Smith Elementary. 
um, under the leadership of Ms. Harrison for many years in the public school system. Mm -hmm. um, but I was there as an aftercare manager, and that's when I decided to lead into um, counseling and into education. Okay. Um, then I started off in Doral Academy, and I was there for 10 years with them. Um, I left there as a lead teacher at the end of the year, and then I came over to an assistant principal position here in Academy or Middle. Um, I was in a principal for one year under Dr. Clado as the principal, and then the following year I became the principal myself of Academy of Middle. So I've been here for six years already as a, as a principal. So no wonder you bring the, the social, emotional, it's top of your list because that's where you started with, with the counseling. Correct, yeah. as a school counselor there. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Ms. Nosa? <laughs> Yes, well, I entered the field of education back in 2005, so I guess this will be my, uh, what about my 16, 17 year. I actually was not an education major. My background is pretty diverse. I uh, began, in, I was a communications major, worked for the media for five years, mm -hmm. uh, but then realized that was not my calling. I, I knew that I had to make a change, and it, one of the best decisions I've ever made came into education. I was an ELA teacher for middle and high school. Uh, taught different uh, variety of courses from language arts to speech and debate, uh, but mostly within the ELA uh, realm. And then I transitioned into instructional coach into that position. And I did that for about four years in other organizations. And then I came into Academy Year. This is my fourth year, I want to say, or okay. fifth year, fourth, fourth year, year, right? Fourth year. At Academy Year, beginning as an ELA coach. And this is my second year as an assistant principal. That that's a great background for you too. That and you seem like you have a very cohesive, like a very great working relationship. Your energies are amazing. <laughs> we actually I, I want to join the team. Yeah. Coincidence, we did work before in Doral Academy, and yeah. then it went different rates, and then we came right back to yeah. each other in Academy. Year. And how small world it is at the end of the day. Yep, 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 yep. Um, well, that's great. Is there anything else about your campus? that you'd like to share with us? I mean, you've shared so much, uh, but it's it's pretty dynamic what you all do. Anything else? Um, no, I mean, the key thing that I always have to say here is obviously I always speak highly over my staff, but also it's just, um, we're small, but we have a lot to offer on there. And that's what makes a difference. And teamwork and attitude, 100%. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know it becomes very overwhelming sometimes. And it's very difficult in all different aspects sometimes. Uh, with students and everything, but the positive attitude is what makes a difference on there. And I know that was even a speaker that we had at uh, National Blue Ribbon yes. about how attitude makes a difference and how you oh, how you geez. feel about certain things and how you want to feel confident and you can still make it happen. And nothing's impossible on yeah. there. So that was one key thing here with the students and with the teachers is always saying, okay, we have these group of students, but it's not to give up on them. It's to work hard to make it happen. And we will make it happen as long as we all work together. Mm -hmm. Yes, always having the students, uh, just our, our mission, we have our vision, but just all being student-centered, really. And the great thing about being a small school, we can talk about XYZ student, and everybody has something to say about that student's uh, strength, weaknesses, and that's how we work better with the student in all different levels. Yeah. So that's something that, you know, our collaborative efforts uh, have always been made, but they just continue to be strong, and we continue to make sure that that is our focus as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I've learned so much from you all. Um, you know, you, you emphasized it, teamwork and energy and that positivity and it's palpable. It's coming through my screen. I love it. <laughs> Congratulations on your blue ribbon. Thank you. Let's, let's talk again uh, soon. I want to hear going. <laughs> thank you so much, Lynn. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. You too. Thank you for listening to Providing Choice, a Florida Charter School Alliance podcast. The Florida Charter School Alliance is the premier support and advocacy organization for charter schools in Florida. Our mission is to increase student achievement and meet the demand for parental choice by assisting, supporting, and advocating for high quality public charter schools. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Providing Choice. To learn more about the Alliance or Academy, visit our website at flcharteralliance.org.